All right, this is a meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission, 23 September. Uh, we call the meeting to order at 5.30 p.m. Uh, do we have a quorum? Yes, we do have a quorum. Thank you, City Secretary. We do have a quorum. Uh, public comments. Each person in attendance who desires to speak to the board on an item on the agenda shall speak during this section. You may get a chance also a little bit later. Public comments have been made regarding the agenda items only. Attendees must be physically present in order to address the board. Committee by proxies are not allowed. Is there anybody here that would like to make a statement about or a comment about anything on the agenda? Please stand up and come to the mic by the podium. Identify yourself and you get three minutes. Hello, my name is Patricia Lauperell, and uh, I'm talking about the beer garden. It's an agenda item. I don't know what number it is um, uh, today. I hope you had the time to review my family album that Gio was so kind to email to you. It tells a little bit about the history of my parents' businesses that were located on East Murphy Street many years ago. Also, 106 East Murphy Street was their home and is now mine and my son Daniel's home. I love the neighborhood I live in and I feel that another bar on the same block will certainly disrupt the quality of living in my home and neighborhood. My home would be enclosed by the Ritchie Hotel and the proposed beer garden that Perla Baeza wants to open at 107 East Murphy Street. At present, the music played at the Ritchie Hotel can be heard in my front living room, my son's bedroom, and the office room of my home. If the beer garden is allowed to be open, music will be played to the left of my home and the front right of my home. I will be bombarded with music being played in the evening hours, and I feel that the noise level of music and customer traffic for these two in entertainment venues will destroy the definition of the zoning classification C1 neighborhood commercial district. Also something to take into consideration is that the Ritchie Hotel was approved for hot funds to construct a concert hall, which more than likely will increase customer traffic and noise. I have looked over the zoning re regulations for M1, which applies to the property owned by Perla Baeza, and from what I read, a beer garden does not comply with the M1 industrial district guidelines. My home, my family home has existed for more than 150 years on East Murphy Street, and I ask that you don't, do not destroy the historical value of my block and neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. LaBarrow. Anyone else? Lonnie, please step up, identify yourself. Good afternoon. My name is Leonel Rodriguez, and I'm a. I live in the neighborhood there of this proposed uh, beer garden. Um, I just had a few questions here uh, regarding like porta potties, water disposal, uh, parking. Are they? Is it going to be also a music venue? Uh, and is I see here on this on this sheet that y'all handed me that it's it's zone industrial. Is that correct? It is. Okay. Because here, this thing from the city, it says neighborhood commercial district. Is that is there a across the street is C2? No, no we, we we make oh, no comment. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can't answer any questions. Okay. All right. Anyway, those are, those are my questions, and and uh, of course, parking would be a because of the already existing Ritchie. Uh, there's a lot of parking on both sides of the street there, uh, and, or streets. Um, I'm just wondering what they're going to do with the added parking. All right. Thank you. So. Thank you. We now begin the public hearings. At this time, the chair will invite members of the public to address each 
for the items listed in the section below. We will read them first. Public hearing A. Gio, would you like to read that one? Sure. Public hearing A is to obtain citizen views and comments regarding replat 2024 10 01 and replat, allowing the applicant Lucia Latoya to amend lot lines to provide conformance with R4 zoning requirements for the subject property. The subject property is located at or about 806 South Cactus Street and is legally described as 1.482 acres out of the South 3.0 acres of the west half of Block 2 Means Edition A. Rupert County, Texas, being all of that certain 1.483 acre tract described in document number 105626, official public records of Brewster County, Texas. The property owner of record is Ruben Lasoya. The property ID for the subject property is 11311. The current zoning classification of the property is R4 Mobile Home District. If the replat is approved, the zoning classification of the subject property will remain R4 Mobile Home District. Thank you. And public hearing B, public hearing to obtain citizen views and comments regarding special use permit 2024-1001, a special use permit authorizing the applicant, Pierre Lavaeva, to obtain a malt beverage retail dealer's on-premise on license, VE, from the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission to establish a beer garden that will include malt beverage sales at the subject property. The subject property is located at the previous farmer's market, 107 East Murphy. The property owner of record is Perla Baeza. The parcel ID of the subject property is 34500. Moving on. We have approval of the minutes from the previous board meeting. We need a motion. I so move. I'll second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Meetings have been approved. Oh, we just need to take a vote. So, uh, oh, have an aye. aye, aye. All ayes, it is unanimous. Any discussion items? These discussion items are, uh, Tom Griffith, uh, you're going to lead these discussion items? I'll do my best. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> don't, uh, don't be disappointed. Uh, Anyway, uh, both of these uh, really address the uh, map that we've looked at previously. It's been uh, uh, worked on by the COG for the last uh, many years. And by the way, that's the Rio Grande Council of Governments. Um, I uh, am a proponent myself of moving forward with utilizing this map as the official map. Uh, so I would like to know, if, I guess, is comments from the board or anybody uh, regarding uh, questions, concerns? Is, uh, is there a copy of the map right now? I don't know if the one that is online right now is the one that you're proposing to. Uh, I, I wish it was. <laughs> it hasn't been approved yet. That's what we're talking about. Okay, but uh, the one that I look at, you know, the zoning map. I do have questions about that in my area, um, but I can't remember everything. You know, some the, the my house and some of the front in like one hundred six East Murphy and where the Richie is is uh, C one. Uh, what is it? Uh, neighbor uh, commercial. So that's what you have to wait for until we get the new map, the updated map, um, uh -huh. and then you'll be able to tell what uh, what the current zoning is. Right now, we can't tell what the current one is. Okay, but from then, when are you going to approve it? Well, and that was it's not up to us to approve. That's, it's up to the city council. That's what we're. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just we're just doing a discussion item on the board. Okay, but um, what you post to the city council is what's on there right now, correct? On the map that's on the map was updated. Uh, eleven years eleven years of updates were made. The map has been printed, and now it goes. To, well, we'll be going to the city council, So we're just discussing that among us. Okay, because. Behind me is some property is M one. Some property. Is See, none, none of that is something. Zone. None of that we can change. We're, the map has already been updated, so we're discussing what to do with the updated map. I, I, I guess. <laughs> so. so technically, um, you know, 
basically we do have one that's approved from 2013 and we've been working towards getting it updated. Um, we do have a draft available, but Commissioner Griffith has been trying to push that through to get approved by city council. But at this time, I'm not sure that city administration is gonna recommend that because um, we are working on doing a comprehensive plan which might affect the zoning. So it, it would need to be approved by city council likely before we would put this draft map on. It, the, the problem is, is that the zoning map hasn't been updated since 2013. So the one you saw is from 2013. There's been uh, 11 years of updates since then. Um, and you know it's really gonna be up either to the planning and zoning commission to move forward with making an official recommendation to city council to approve the map or uh, city administration doing that. but. At this point, there's a discussion item for the October 1st council meeting, and the council will be discussing that there. So I recommend if you have any thoughts, like if whether or not it should be approved right now, to get with the council member and let them know that they're going to go in that, to that discussion next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, okay. Could I, could I add something to this? Any recommendations? When can the you can talk to your council member as well. So, um, you know, nothing should really change from the 2013 map unless somebody went through a zoning change process. That would include notifying the neighbors within 200 feet, sending letters. Um, so it's likely that the area that you're talking about, you would have been notified if the zoning changed on that. There's also been some um, clarification on some of the other zoning that we found that was a little wonky. And I know Jessica and Robert have been working on that in the background to clean it up. They've been working with Megan, and I think that's kind of what we've been waiting on to move forward, is what I understand. Is that not correct? Unfortunately, we'll be waiting probably for our B and Z in November before we get that response. And I think that's what the October was to, to discuss. Yeah, whether or not to move forward know, with that in November, that, wasn't it? If you do, the, the issue is, is that again, the city manager is in the process of, you know, trying to do the comprehensive plan, which is the council priority. And which rolls really into that. Yeah. So her, her uh, stance on it is that she doesn't want to put that map forward just yet because. That's my thinking. Right, yeah. Right. yeah. Right. If y'all have we any move ideas. On. Well, well, this is what we're talking yeah, about. Can't with, 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 move forward with what you're asking to do because we have to wait on that, right? Uh, the, yes. Well, with the, the exact verbiage almost y'all are talking about are listed in the pros and cons. Okay, go ahead. That's the next discussion item, yeah. Um, so that's what my point is. <laughs> essentially, you know, like I said, it's the commission's prerogative. If y'all really wanted to recommend it be updated, you could, but I really would recommend you waiting for the council meeting, at least tuning in and hearing the discussion. If you are passionate about getting updated sooner, then let them go. I think it's, it's been 11 years. It needs to be done and needs, needs to be done correctly. And I think that's what city manager and the others are trying to do at this point. So we don't want to rush through it just because somebody wants to push it through. Let's give it another couple of months and make it right. Yeah, That's my the thinking. The on. Plan might take, you know, and it needs to be done. A bit yeah. more than yeah. Why did you do that? Yeah. It's just, I have a lot of questions of what is zoned and how it's zoned right now. We all do. <laughs> it should be the same. Unless you were so that map yeah. that you saw online, it's likely going to be the same unless you receive notification of, of otherwise, at least in your immediate vicinity. Yeah, well, that's that's why I have questions on how it's sold right now because a lot of it, instead of family dwelling, is apartment sold. And I don't understand how those houses and those lots got apartment sold. And then there was only one property that is family dwelling. So, who's your city commissioner? Um, uh, Linda, I mean, Lucy. Okay, you gotta take it up with her. Yeah, you really need to sit down and have her show you some of the yep. things that yep. we okay. I mean I yeah, we're just happy advisory to we, we just we make your recommendations to them. Yeah. Or you can yeah. you can come see me at yeah. 309. There you go. Uh, That's even better. We'll see also, <laughs> we can look at our zoning map and I can explain everything to you and we can go over it because certain zonings you're allowed to have like for that you can like for an apartment district, you can build an R1 in it. You know, but I can go over it all and show you in the ordinance and explain it to you um, okay. so you can understand it a lot better. Yeah, feel free to come by whenever. Okay. Better just me. I got it. Yeah. I'll give you a card before we leave. Okay, thank you. Yes, okay, Commissioner Griffin, the ball back in your court. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay.
maybe these things weren't uh, written properly, but uh, basically uh, I was wondering if anybody on the board has had a chance to look at the proposed map and to uh, and have any comments or concerns about the proposed map. And that's I mean, what we were talking updated. about. Uh, proposed. The new proposed map is what okay, you said. Okay, forward. <laughs> I call it the proposed map because it is proposed. Yes, I've had a chance to look at it. Okay. That's what my that's what A is. That's all A says. Have you looked at what I'm trying to get there? Have you looked at the map? Does you have do you have concerns about the map that are like uh significant? Well, uh, it's interesting that it shows the spot zoning, but the, you know, all the spot zonings, all the spot zonings on that map are, are and I a result to them. And they're working with Megan to clean that up before we move forward with, okay. you know, putting a blessing on that map. Yep. And there were things that really needed to be, you know, be addressed. Yes. You don't think what? I'm sorry. Say that again. I couldn't hear you. There were items on the map that needed to be addressed, and. Um, we had a conversation. I went and talked to Robert and Jennifer, Jessica. Jessica. I always put your name Jessica. wrong. I'm so sorry. And I don't know why I want to call her Jennifer. But um, and then they took it to Megan. What we spoke about, and so Megan has been working with them to move all those things through. Um, it had to do a lot of with some of the C two and C T one uh, A and two A's and things like that. Okay, are you talking about boundaries? Or are you talking about spot zones? I'm talking about areas that were zoned that were never codified that needed to be cleaned up is that a, again is that a spot zone i wouldn't call it spot zoning i don't know i wasn't there in 1995 when it was done but it was done in 95 okay. and no one knows why it was done that way and that was our whole conversation was why was it done this way and how can we make it right going forward it needs to be done that way so what are we waiting so for? So, yeah, uh, my question is, we've been working with the COG, not, well, I haven't been on the committee for about three years now, with all the ordinances that have been, that we have, that I, at least I know we have, and uh, maybe I should invite her here. She says she's been working quite diligently with, with y'all until, oh, a few months back to get all the, what I call spot zoning, <laughs> ordinances. That have to be passed to allow somebody an exception or variance or what have you in a boundary. Is that correct? What I just said. Spot zoning has been taken off of our plate at this point in time. Yeah. Is that what I understand? Yeah, spot zoning you know? is typically illegal in Texas unless it meets certain requirements. Okay, well, and, what what do you call them? What do you call them when you? Well, have a, the what I was about to say is basically over the years the prior councils have chosen to spot zone. For whatever reason so even though it's really typically not acceptable they did it and okay. so we're now in the position where you know it's i mean thing. we'd have to go through the whole zoning change process you know to revert a spot zone and that would include notifying the property owner notifying the owners and that could be initiated through planning and zoning of city council some of the no. ordinances were actually written back in 1995 or 96 or something like that that needed to be tweaked and cleaned up and done and that's what robert and jessica have been working with megan um, on making sure that they got those corrected before i mean there's no reason to approve the map and then have to backtrack and do all those again you need to make sure that the ordinances are written the way they need to be to reflect current events right now and what we're doing currently right yeah and the way we can make the map match what our ordinance is. yes which means they may have to go back to cog and say this is not this it's really going to be there because the ordinance is now changed and we need to fix that is that am i saying that correctly yeah the cog map the map that cog does right now has those 11 or 14, 15 years worth of changes implemented and they were not good correct. changes so, they were right yeah well no i mean the city passed them and yeah uh, but it, even even one of the city council members that were here a few meetings back, um, was on the city council at that time, and he admitted at the time, you know, that some things were done that didn't make sense, and it is, in his opinion, now it needed to really be not cleaned up, need, and that's what they've been working on. Change, yeah. <laughs> you remember what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> I, I have two two questions and possibly a suggestion. My first question is code. 
is the current map, the one that we're discussing, is it not more accurate than the map that yes. we're currently using? 100%. Yes, 100%. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there some official capacity why we cannot approve? Hold on, you haven't even heard the question yet. <laughs> no, and, and I, yeah, I mean, if I can get my question out there, you both are probably going to okay, go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, we can have an interim mayor, we can have an interim city manager. This map that we're talking about is far more accurate than the map we're currently using. Can we not approve it as an interim map so that we have a more accurate tool to work with and it becomes a tool that ultimately finds its way into the comprehensive plan? Yeah, it could be approved. But yeah, that mean it didn't say approved, I say interim. Well, I mean, Wouldn't that mean you're it has going to be codified? Like it's going to be different. And that's going to cost money. And then you have to change it whenever you change uh, all the- We could get to the uh, closing plans. And then you have to codify it. So then you're costing the city double you, rather than just waiting a couple of months and making it right. I, I don't know where you have to pay every time that you do logic that. is coming from. If I could get to the pros and cons. Go ahead. Okay. I, I think some of these things will be answered. Okay. This this will direct accessibility uh, better. Pros. I'm going to go over those because I like pros. Uh, the current map produced by the COD, what we just say, is more up to date. Maybe I left a word out the current one used by the city of Alpine is not. We just said that. When the city of Alpine awards a comprehensive plan study, the contractor has a much better starting point, okay, than they do with the older map. Uh, the COG work is being provided free. So there's no cost, except our time. Okay. Uh, the comprehensive plan will likely require edits to the map. So even if you, whatever map you're using, if by the time you're done with the comprehensive plan, plan you're going to have to edit that map anyway. There's only one people. There's only one person here in this town or region can do that, and that's the COG. Um, Let's see, what does it say? Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense to people? The comprehensive plan will most likely require edits anyway. Exactly why I suggested it. Yeah, interim. Did. But it's not something, okay. Let them go ahead and finish. Okay. Uh, that, that, I'm just saying that's a pro in a way. Maybe I said it wrong. The city of Alpine can provide the contractor with the COGS data. This should translate to a cost reduction for the comprehensive plan effort. This data is editable. The I look at something like a, a a plan or map or what have you with boundaries in commercials and commercial districts and residential districts as kind of an organic thing anyway. You know, it's going to have to change here and there. So you should be the idea of editing it shouldn't be such a uh, no place to go. I mean, you know, because we're going to have to edit it anyway, in my opinion. Um, the Council of Government has the only current geospatial data, uh, and that's free of charge to us as well. Okay, here's the one that we were talking about. The rationale for delaying until the comprehensive plan is complete may require further discussion. <laughs> I guess we've been doing that, so excuse me for intervening. The plan could take up to 18 to 24 months to complete. Has the plan been awarded? No, Okay. I don't think we've even gone out for proposals yet. Okay, so we're talking some time here. Meanwhile, to address what you were saying about an interim uh, map, meanwhile, the COGS map can be used regardless of future edits because the edit process is free. Right. Okay. And I hope the city of Alpine is organic and growing. <laughs> there you go. Questionable zoning boundaries may be handled on a case-by-case -case ba uh, basis. I, I suspect this will have to be done anyway. Um, so those, to me, are reasons to move forward, at least with an interim map, something we can work on, something that's uh, in better condition and what have you. The cons. Well, what are the problems? Okay. 
may have to constrain any boundary edits until a comprehensive plan is complete. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, let's say there, uh, um, the comprehensive plan comes up with an idea, oh, this boundary is in the, it's on the wrong side of the street. It needs to move. Okay. Well, uh, we may have to wait until the comprehensive plan is done to actually move that boundary. Okay, that's just a, that's a that's a kind of a shady gray area of being a con versus a pro. <laughs> the contractor may not accept the geospatial data. I've seen people like that. They may want to go out and collect their own and charge try to charge the city for it. Surveys may result in many edits. Uh, this, so this requires coordination of city of Alpine administration, uh, the planning and zoning commission, and possibly the car. Any anytime you bring somebody in and they resurvey something, you're going to wind up with some little questions here and there. So you got to deal with that. Uh, and the city council may have exceptions to the current uh, cog mapped boundaries. Well, they may not like them, so that's a con. Uh, one thing that I didn't put on here, and it's sort of a sidebar, is that. Um, we're developing, uh, this is not neither a pro or a con, but we're developing uh, data, geospatial data. We're asking a company to come in and do a comprehensive plan, which is gonna typically provide geospatial data. What do I mean by that? I mean, polygons, boundaries, points, what have you, information that you put on that. Oftentimes I've seen the case where they take a, uh, what we've given them, as I said, was a pro. <laughs> They'll be able to have a better starting point with more current data, repackage it and resell it to the city. So that's a consideration. And that's all I have. I have a question for Gio. If you were to take the new map and do as they're asking, would that not um, be codifying the map? No, not necessarily, because it's basically collecting all of the approved ordinances since 2013, right. and that those were all done by ordinance changing zones throughout the city, and it would be making it more current. So really, it, would, it already has costed us nothing, because the right. real uh, Grand Council of Governments did do a free of charge. So it would be taking those the map and just making it the official map, it's more, the most up-to-date, and then we would use that going forward. I don't personally see an issue with that. Okay. But again, the city manager preferred to wait for the comprehensive plan. Correct. Uh, so, uh, which again, might change some of the zoning outside, is what I understand. Like if you were going to bring more, well, like outside the city limits in or something. That the comprehensive sense. plan might include, and we've discussed it before, is making uh, the main thoroughfares, the state highways, commercial. Like, you know, right. Well, oh, commercial. Yes. And so, you know, that is correct. If if we do come, make a comprehensive plan, we might have to come back and edit it. But either way, we'll have to edit it. You see what I'm saying? Maps from this would edited. provide a mechanism for us to have something more up to date, if approved already, because it's more up to date than the 2013 map. That's my opinion, again. But my ultimate recommendation is for you all to tune in on October 1st and see what the council thinks, and for you all to let the council know what you feel. And after that meeting, if y'all want to move forward with making a recommendation to approve it, you somebody can add it to the agenda. And but, in that period of time, um, Robert and Jessica, which they've been working on for what, six weeks or a couple of months now already? Um, a couple months, yeah. Yeah, at least cleaning up all of the, um, the codes and, and the ordinances separate. and things like that that needed to be done because it hadn't been done. And it's then you get from the map. So the only it is thing, separate, but it, it could still affect it. The only thing, well, I mean, it really shouldn't affect it unless we completely overhaul the zones. If they're making huge changes, you know what I'm saying? We're not into the. Uh, there's some there significant there? ones, aren't there? There's, I think, two or three. Significant yeah, ones and I there. think that's what Megan was talking about. Why she decided, you know, to hold back on it. And I, I don't know. I'm not in her head, but I feel like. Like you were saying, amending the zoning ordinance will be amending the code. Okay, the map is separate from the okay. code. The only thing is the code implements the restrictions. Now. So then you have but to you go back in and myself. change the map again. Well, I mean, the main significant change, I'm guessing, one of them would be removing C2. It really wouldn't be difficult. Okay. There's not very many C2A properties um, that would be 
Okay. Yeah, Thank you. Yes. If we can I ask a question, uh, if, is it possible to get the city manager to come talk to us? She's not available. Um, I mean, it's, uh, it's some Definitely point. next time. Mm -hmm. um, she usually makes it. It's just we're doing in the beer right now. Mm -hmm. Closing the books is completely budget. Okay. okay. Well, that would be nice uh, because I'd like to, I'd like to understand uh, her. Uh, I don't know about complete rationale, but at least the rationale coming from her. Um, I think again, as opposed the, to someone else, <laughs> that the ten one meeting is going to provide a lot of insight on steps moving forward. So I okay. do think it's important. I'll relay your thoughts to council ahead of that, and then on top of that, based on that meeting, you can make a decision if you want to add something to the agenda, how it's going to move forward. But the council is going to discuss it all on their own. If no one tells them anything, they're going to make it probably give some direction. And make a decision on how to do we, we haven't, right? We haven't said anything to the city council moving forward or not or anything like that. This this team, right? Um, not anything regarding the zone. No. You know, the only reason why I know about it, excuse me, I sat in on some of the city council meetings, so I know what they were talking about. So I heard what Megan was saying in the city council meetings in reference to it because I went to those. So I'm gonna recommend that we keep this as a discussion item. And attend the next city council meeting, anybody that's interested, and uh, make your uh, uh, views known to them. Just one more yes. comment so. before we move on. I've been very patient, tried not to interrupt. So I spent 40 years in research and film. And what I'm witnessing here is what we called creeping evidence. We're not going to release it until it's perfect. Well, the best way to get from A to D is to go to B first and figure out what you did wrong and go to C next and fix those mistakes. And D will be a much better product. But if you stay at A until you're happy that D is perfect, guess what? None of us are going to live long enough to get there. It's creeping elegance. It's common. I'm not trying to cast a gate. It happens all the time. But the right solution is A, B, C, D, not A and then D. But you're complaining about things that are not in the purview of planning and zoning, right? Complaining about life. <laughs> I, I would just like to say something. I love to buy properties. I'm into real estate sometimes. I was just hearing what they were saying. They, they go to our city website. That map should be as correct as possible. And right now it's over 11 years old. So even she that's not sure about her property is very easy for him to say, you should have gotten a letter, but maybe she just bought it within the last four years. And 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 so I feel like it's it's not right. Waiting 18 months or, and I don't know about um, the city council, what they said, but I think the sooner we can get a map out to our community, the better. Now, if it's a lot of issues, uh, later on, um, I wasn't aware of that. I know we met, we looked at the map. I was like, oh, so happy for a community. Now there's new maps that are coming out. And I thought that was going to be the recommendation to city council. I didn't realize that there's other issues if we move with that. And, and it doesn't seem like it's very clear. So I think like you just suggested, it would be good, you know, for the city manager or um, to bring it to our attention because for us we're like we saw our map it seems like they all been working on it um, and now the public is coming and, and they are like well is this map updated or not so it's more work for them now they need to go over there and talk to them or we're telling them go talk to your city council when there is a decent map out there I thought it was an excellent map whatever that group that did it so but again I don't know what the overall issue but to me the sooner we can get them something if it's not going to be more issues to them then the better I, yeah i don't i don't I agree i don't see how it's an additional cost to the city at all i think it's nothing but a benefit in fact you know i'd be happy if the city would publish it and put draft all over it at least it would be more accurate. Right, we, need, <laughs> we need to express these views to our city council. I just feel bad for her. Like she's uh -huh. supposed to have several properties and is not even sure. And you know, somebody wants to buy a property next door. They they look at a map and they say, "Oh, this is what it is." And we already know. We know it's incorrect. 
that map that's there. And I make a motion that we move on because we can discuss this yes. all night and we will solve a thing here. Yeah, we're not, we're not, yeah, we're not the. Uh, we're not. Uh, anybody want a second? Uh, <laughs> The city council, the city council. It's up to, the city, up to the city council what they want to do. Oh, changing something? That's a whole different story. Check with Robert and Jessica. They can help get you through it. But yeah, talk to your city council and come to the meeting. Yeah, I, 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 they all oh, okay. They're also at the city council meeting, so okay. you can, yeah. if they're, they go to both meetings. I see them both up all the time. I'm not sure how the, talk, all the process works. If you, you can if always, wanted yeah. to make recommendations on zoning and ask neighbors, are you happy with this zoning? You know, and if they're not happy with it, what is the process to go through, you know, to rezone that particular area? They can walk you through it. All right, you want to take a five minute break? Yeah. And then we'll come back All to right. public hearing B. Yeah, even that one. I know. Well, let's keep going. <laughs> Go catch me a bobcat. Wouldn't that be nice? I got raccoons. Uh, raccoons in my backyard. Yeah, I need back back to come catch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool.
order. That's my question. And for joy. <laughs> discussion item B, are we done with that? No. Discussion item B. I think we, we discussed both of them at the same time. So the yeah. item B. Yeah, they were a blend. <laughs> and we'll come back to, to, to that one. Uh, next, next meeting. Yeah. All right. Action items. Action item A. Do you, you want to read that again? Sure. Action item A is to approve replat 2024 10 01, a replat allowing the applicant Ruben Lasoya to amend lot lines to provide conformance with the R4 zoning requirements of the subject property. The subject property is located at or about 806 South Cactus Street and is legally described as 1.482 acres out of the south 3.0 acres of what the west half of block two in main division a brewster county texas being all that certain 1.43 acre tract described in document number 105626 official public records of brewster county texas the property owner of record is Ruben and soya the property id of the second property is 11311 the current zoning classification of the property is r4 mobile home district if the replat is approved the zoning classification of the subject property will remain r4 mobile home district Thank you. And if we can just get a motion a second uh, to approve, then we can start to discuss. Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. We got a second. Second. All right. Anybody drive by and look at that property? Yeah. yeah four, yep. Really cleaned up. They did an amazing job cleaning that property up. Uh, and got after it. That one mobile home is now gone. Mm. But any comments on the request for replat? Is there anybody here that would like to comment on that replat? I don't see any. What other. Do replat? I, I, I didn't understand it too well, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So originally, um, he's an R4, so the mobile home district. And the, originally, the school box was one piece of land. So he he has multiple. He bought a manufactured park, but it was grandfathered. So he couldn't put more trailers on. He couldn't pull it off. He tried to rezone it, but then he realized that's not really what he wanted to do. And so he ended up um, replatting it so that each box is a lot that he could put trailer on legally now. So he, before he couldn't do anything with it. So now he can actually use the plan. And what's so, your recommendation? For I, I think that this isn't mm -hmm. this isn't. Um, the best route to take because it's going to be um it's conforming to the ordinance so they wouldn't be non-conforming anymore they're, they're conforming to what our ordinance has that more that each lot has its own or have its own yeah yeah it looked like he, he he backtracked and then finally he took the appropriate steps to to meet the with the zoning requirements it's good for so, anything yeah. to get so. conform going forward with going going forward to cleaning up all these especially the old Mobile district. So, just for clarification, from, if we approve this, everything he does from that approval forward will be conforming to code. Yes. Okay. Well, try to make a motion to move forward. I'll oh, second. Well, it's already uh, on, the, on the table yeah. to approve. So, you would just all need to vote, vote. on that approval. Do we have a vote? Aye. Aye. Vote is unanimous. Vote is unanimous. It is approved. Uh, 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 I vote. Okay, now moving on to uh, action item B, approved a special use permit 2024 10 01, a special use permit authorizing the applicant, Carla Baez, to obtain a malt beverage retail dealer's on premise license, BE, from the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission to establish a beer garden that will include malt beverage sales at the subject property. The subject property uh, is located at the previous farmer's market, the 107 East Harpy. The property only on record is Perla Baeza. The parcel ID is 34500. We have a motion to approve. So we can talk about it. We'll discuss. Motion to discuss. Second. Uh, okay. I, I, what about the concerns? No, no. This is how we can talk about it. it for oh, yeah. Sorry. I'm oh, sorry. So seconds. Okay. Yeah, I'm like you. I <laughs> I'm, I'm, got ahead of myself. Not on the second. I got ahead of myself. Yes. Sorry. Not there. So okay. this is purely for off for a permit for the malted beverage. Those are already sound. Um, it's not for the facility. The well, that's the question. Um, this malt beverage, uh, she already owns a property and wants to build all sorts of 
you saw the plans. It's, it's already there. If you look, it's got everything basically, I think, in that picture, right? The bathrooms and kind of, yeah. There's nothing, yeah, there's nothing, nothing, nothing there right now. Right? There. Yeah, there's, 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 there's no bathroom. Doesn't have any bathroom. No, it's got porta potties. <laughs> I don't know if it just has the porta potties and, and the little shit. Yeah. Oh. Okay. It's, <laughs> it's got those. It has, you know. has porta potties, or maybe they put them. Question yeah. for uh, ordinances. <laughs> M1. What are the requirements to have a building with M1? Is there a, does it have to, can it use porta potties? Does it have to have a- She's gonna do a kitchen. And so once she pulls building permits for that kitchen and she's gonna be required to have an actual established bathroom that's ADA compliant. And is she aware of that? She is. Okay, all right. Thank do you, you. Do yes. you have a timeline for when she might do that? I do not. Because temporary sanitation facilities to me mean temporary. Very. Not 18 to 24 months. Exactly. <laughs> she's not here. She's not here. No, she's not no, here. Carla is not so, here. So what we're saying, I'm thinking here, is that she's kind of requesting for approval to have the permit. She's putting the cart before the horse because she doesn't have the bathrooms or the kitchen done yet. Am I reading that correctly? Or is well, she allowed to do that? No bathrooms on M1. She was just trying to have like um, a, from what I understand, was like a private gatherings at first until she can go forward with building the kitchen and the bathrooms. And so it wasn't gonna be like open to the public or anything. And so I told her with that, when you do your special use conditional use permit and then get your TABC license and everything, when you do an event like that, you would need at least quarter potties for those events. They're not, she didn't like, she can leave them there as long as she wants. Um, I can't really restrict that. Um, but I can require them to be there when she has those events. Well, does Alpine have a porta potty cleaning company? Uh, several. Mm -hmm. Yeah, several. Okay. Yeah. So okay. The, my question: so if she giving her permission to apply for an alcohol license is what we're really talking about. Mm -hmm. If we do that, does what next is what's the next step? She can be open for business. I, does the reason where I'm going to just get to the point, I was a member of Tierra Grande's night sky ordinance team. We spent three years getting the city to approve a night sky ordinance. We currently have the largest geographic area of night sky in the world. She has put up a bunch of lights that mm -hmm. are not night sky. Is she going to be able to open? I mean, what does she not require to meet our ordinances? Oh, no, she does. The okay, so night sky ordinance is into effect. The dark sky ordinance is mm -hmm. going into effect. In 2020. It affects it, all new. It properties. affects all new properties. Yeah, new, you yeah, cannot new install new. an old light. It has to be compliant. If, that, you, it's, if you replace a light, you have to replace. It's almost like our our signing that we had issues with. If somebody wants to put up a new sign going forward, it has to be night dark sky compliant. Or and replace. So a I'm current wondering current. if that's. What he's, I agree with what he's saying on that. I had thought we about have that. yet That's to do true. an inspection on the property. Okay. Uh, I also haven't had any like legal right to do an inspection right now. Right. So, um, or a complaint by all means, if you want to make a formal complaint, I have legal I'm, right I'm to happy to do it. So, I'll, I'll be <laughs> down <laughs> tomorrow to do that. Okay, the next question yeah. I have, I agree with uh Lonnie, mm -hmm. she has no parking. Okay, we're, br we're bringing, we're bringing the, some of the local concerns up. Um, Mr. Rodriguez, would you like to come up and, and address? Uh, or would you just like to hear what I have to say about the party? <laughs> okay. So I believe in my heart, and I hope everybody here believes in their heart, that planning, zoning, codes, and ordinances should be equitably enforced to every property owner in Alpine. Doesn't matter who you know, doesn't matter if you're the cousin of a city council member, it doesn't matter if you were born and raised here. The same rules apply to everybody. She has no parking. When I bought the Ritchie and was going to remodel the Ritchie, I was told that I had to have 13 parking spaces on my property, or I had to get written permission from surrounding property owners mm -hmm. to park. I can tell you Union Pacific said no, and most places are going to say no, and I'm going to say no. I'm our closest neighbor and I've got the most property and I, I cannot afford the liability that comes 
with participating in the establishment that it sells adult beverages. The, that opens up a Pandora's box of liability. So I'm going to deny that she can park on my property. In so doing, where is she going to park? And are you going to require her to get written permission from anybody around her to have a place to park? You want to require her when she submits an actual plan for the building to have parking that meets the IBC. Point of interest, if I could. Mm -hmm. um, Saturday evening, I happened to drive down through that way just to check out the parking. You couldn't get up and down Murphy Street for all the cars that were parked at the Ritchie. And she wasn't even open yet. In fact, they were parking in her parking space there as much as they could get in there. And it was packed. And, you know, I got to say, I, I reside at a property that backs up to the Granada. Granada has not, doesn't have enough parking, especially when they do events there. I can't get out of my garage, my back garage half the time when there's an event there because people block that whole area behind my garage. I can't even back across the alley to get out. So I kind of understand what's going on, but I also know there's other establishments in the area, such as the Granada or the Alcove or Saddle Club or whatever you want to call it, and uh, the Ritchie that don't comply to what you're talking about. Right now, they don't. Right. So what's to stop her from doing it? Yeah. You know, you can't call it for one and not call it for the other. I'm just saying. That, that was the point of my question is if we, and it takes a long time. I mean, it takes a long time. It can take up to a year to get an alcohol license. And I understand that. But if she gets her alcohol license, is she going to be open for business? Because as far as I'm concerned, there's a whole lot of stuff that she still needs to complete. She, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's a lot of what ifs, but there's a lot of also processes that have to happen for them. Like she doesn't even have a certificate of occupancy. She can't do anything. She doesn't have a building. <laughs> what is she occupying? Is everybody? There's blueprints that are going to have to be submitted and reviewed. There's a lot of stuff that's going to have to be done before. Okay. And, and everything's going to meet code. I'm sorry. I, I'm not smart enough to come up with stuff. Uh, right, I understand. Uh, I understand, and so I'm not. I'm not condemning you. There's the, no, no, the no, people okay. that came between before you. Yeah. But more importantly, the gaps between the inspectors, mm -hmm. because a lot of businesses are open for business that I know didn't get an occupancy permit or anything else because we weren't staffed to do it. Mm -hmm. And you know, if it takes her nine months to get a license, and you go find a better job someplace else. <laughs> Where does that leave us? Same old We're story. Y'all are stuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're not complaining. Not it's all anywhere. good. You guys are doing a good job. Yeah. Commissioner Nix, any questions? Um, no, I'm just not sure if, if we if this is the time for us to even review this. Is it too early? So the thing is, is the state of Texas requires the city to within 30 days make a decision. If he wants an alcoholic, you know, permit, it's you know. Um, there's other factors that are coming into consideration with the building side, the code side. Well, that's its own issue. Okay. If she wants the permit, we have to basically consider it and make it. And once she gets the permit, how long does she have before she has to apply for her liquor license? So, you know, um, that's really dependent on the ABC. So she, she, this is just basically us signing off that, that we approve the alcohol license. And then there's all the other stuff she'll have to do if she wants to open to the public. Just, just a matter of fact for everybody, Ricky De La Hoya has a liquor license right next door. Really? I remember when we approved that. Um, at one uh, event center, you guys approved that it's just a vacant lot next to it. So did they apply? They applied for the special use permit. They did. They have a special use permit, but it's only for it's only for the event space, not for alcohol. But he's, I think the what I remember so, was he was going to be able to sell beer. I, they might have done a temporary uh, license or permit, which has different requirements, and we don't have to sign off on those. Yeah. Okay. I got a question. Why is P and Z involved in anything to do with the alcohol license? We should be involved with what to do with. So it goes as back as to the property zoning. goes. It goes back to zoning. So uh, a special an alcoholic special use permit is a zoning issue. That is why we have the notification process to notify the neighbors, let them know that it's, you know, on there. And it's allowed for zoning to have the alcohol. What so of, what zone is there? 
And that M1. Property. It's, it's, it is M1. Yeah, so it, M1 yeah. includes tavern, which is what I would consider well, it, a beer. Yeah, it includes C1 yeah, and C2, so, which cover taverns. So we, it's zone, it's allowed per zone. We have, we have, we have yeah. some residents here. We're li I'd like to bring them up to the, to the, to the podium and, and address the- That's my only what question. You, what is it? So Yeah, so you can't like have you? a tavern or an M1 that's included with C1 well, and C2. Go ahead. My home has been there for, like I said, 150 years. And I don't believe that you are considering me and my home. That East Murphy Street is becoming like Bourbon Street, you know, and I don't want it like that. I, I live there, you know, and in the evenings, I can't go outside and stay in my patio and not listen to music. I have to listen to the Richie. And now I'm going to have to go outside and sit there, listen to the Richie on one side, and then listen to her on the other side. So what is the quality of my home? I don't think you all are taking that into consideration. Yes, it's been C1, but look, I've been there 150 years. I just can't get up and move. And it's not historic. If they do make East Murphy like they were planning to make it historic, you know, what does how do, how does that come in with a historic? Uh, that because you know from the the Alpine City Council, they are considering making Ritchie Hotel and my home a historic uh, district. So if you approve her, she's in really not a historic district. I mean, there's nothing historic about her. So and and it's the noise, the noise in the evening. You know, sure, I listen to the Richie every once in a while, but I don't always like the music they play. And from what I understand, you know, she's more uh, Spanish oriented. So she's going to have probably Latin music on one side, and we're going to have Richie Hotel country music or jazz music or how whatever they have on the other side. So it's going to be clashing and I'm right in the middle of it. What are our noise ordinances? Well, they're very loud right now, but let me yeah. Gio, what is our ordinance? Um, there is an ordinance basically with restrictions on how loud they can be with hours and things of that nature. So, um, I mean, if you want it specific, I can tell you that it's, you know, 75, that's more. I think there at the Richie, it's 80, 80, 80 at, the, at the property line. Depending on live music or no, it's 80 if it's decibel. outside or inside or whatever. I mean, <laughs> I know that because I can Mr. Rodriguez, would you like to come up and, 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 oh, Mr. Sure, and, and some of your concerns? Mm -hmm. I listen to it in my backyard too. <laughs> I live in the neighborhood and have for many years in a very old historic adobe. And what our neighbors are saying is that this is an invasion into our homes. We can be in our house watching television and hear the Richie on certain nights, not all nights. Some of the music I like, some I don't. Um, but you're gonna put another beer joint with live music in a neighborhood where there are children and old people. I mean, we were there first. Um, I just think you need to take it into consideration that it's too loud. There's no parking. There's no running water there. I mean, I don't know if they have permits for that yet, but anyway. I'd like to keep the neighborhood a little bit more quiet than what it is. Yes, ma'am. Do you, do you know who Maud Bear was? Pardon? Maud Baines. Do you know who she was? No. He, her husband built the house that I lived in on Saros. She was one of the matriarchs of Alpine for a long, long time. She wrote in her memoirs, what an oddity Alpine is. We have more bars than churches. Yes, I just don't think we need another one. And I, what worries me I is before she does get her liquor license and everything else, she can have private party, private events. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're, they don't have any control over that whatsoever. Just like I can have a private event in my backyard. But anyway, thank you. All right, any more comments? Anything we do here goes to the city council to make the actual yes, we're, we're decision, just, right? We're so just, this is just we're just advisory. We're just advisory. Yeah. Board. So would would we be out of order to ask for that we 
we ask that she flesh this out with more detail. And um, once yeah, she does because, that, then we would vote on it. Or, like I no. told you, the state of Texas gives us 30 days to approve once that uh, application comes in. So we, we really need to make a decision. So we vote that in. She would have to pay for the application. 350. Well, she hasn't applied yet. We have to yeah. give her no, permission to make the application to us. The city. We make a recommendation. The city for the application. Yeah, the application. It's right so it yeah. application forward was 350, and then we scheduled it for consideration for y'all. Within scheduled 30 that days. Tuesday and that's where we're at. Look, I may be being unfair, but I feel like I'm being asked to sign a blank check. <laughs> It's a good way to it. You know, if you feel you don't have enough information, you're able to vote again. All right. Thank you. You can abstain. No, I think I'll vote against so, it. And uh, so, uh, any more discussion? Uh, I do. Okay, so, so, I understand the Ritchie is a commercial, and then her house is in the middle. Is that what I yes, understand? I'm right next door, door, and I am also C1 neighborhood. Commercial. Neighbor. So, she's but commercial. I get it. And then that other property is commercial. And what has been in that property all these years? Well, to to class, um, mm -hmm. it's M1. That's well, that's across the street is in one, and then her property and all of those properties, like the Richie and Seaworth. And then okay. what about that whole lot? That's it was in one. one. So okay. Mary, the train train has about yeah, the, the train uh, tracks. Everything that joins the train track. 1888 and the harvest. Yeah. And, and what is that? The one that was there? No, it's two. It's two. It's two. It's two. Okay, and then behind those houses, so here's all their houses. What is all these? There's, they're different zones. Some are apartment zones. Only one lot is family dwelling. Only so, so the house that's behind it is that also a C one or is four at our board? Let me send it to the only yeah, like all along Murphy is C one. Yeah. The current thing. Yeah, and then everybody behind is that the map? It's right yeah. the yep. corner there. So I have a map. So I have a map. Then in the old map, Mr. Fielder's property is in blue. That was recently changed. Okay, and and that's a different zone. I can't remember exactly what that was. That's a good question. That's in blue. I didn't write think that one is um, Mercy Dew. I think the south side of Mercy that I own is C two. The north side of Murphy that I own is M1. I had a question. That's yep. right. Yep. The permits. Yeah. That helps if she doesn't get all the permits. Yeah, and then in the end, you can go get her. I don't know. I don't know. Is anything It's also allowed me, which is my most fortunate. They also have a fruit which covers cider and oh, all wines the and, and it's all in the right. district. And you can buy so each license and you can buy only one license. Is that right? But you can also buy. And in R2, it's just all for And of course, if it's there, it's quite an authority. They want to make it as complicated and as expensive as it can be. Yeah, right there. So most people are going to be like any do maybe all this here. And then you just see. But it's very expensive to get it. You know, on the track side of them, one. I thought I mentioned it. She can only do that. She can only do that. So, quick, or three kids. Yeah, my name is Anna. Is there anything I can do for a lot of payment? Oh, I don't see a slide. Oh, okay. Until she gets her license, you can. But if she's a licensed purveyor, you cannot bring liquor on because she has to pay tickets. No, she can do that. And if I own this, 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 yeah, I just think these two are probably going to be. You can call the. Except, I think the feeling is probably going to be. Right. It's so nice. 
from this proposed beer garden. Uh, I'm talking about the music and the noise. I'm gonna play what I recorded in my front room, the sound from the Ritchie, a block plus away. Uh, That's in my front room. What trying to watch football game? But, but you're holding an electronic device. You could have recorded a softer sound and then amplified it. Sir, <laughs> but I'm, I'm not. I'm not finished. You you say that that is about the amplitude that you heard at the time. Okay. From uh, from our front room. Okay. So, adding another music menu. He was saying there should be some consideration to the neighbors. I mean, we have totally elderly folks that live already talked to me, complained about they can't sit in their yard in the evening. And the Mexicanos, that's a tradition for them, though. Folks like to sit in the yard or on their porch and take in the evening, and they, that just doesn't happen anymore. Well, Maybe right, thank you. you could, at some point when they're that loud, you might want to contact someone that can maybe check on the noise level well, that they have going. Yeah, I, 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 it I, does I, sound like I their noise ordinance is loud. The city police department, and they tell me they can't do anything about it. They say that from 7 or whatever time it is till 12, they can play music as loud as they want. Well, that can't be right. No, that's not not it's not right. You know? <laughs> Uh, but that's that's the way they're enforced. So they uh, just don't know the ordinance. Well, the, they have the machines that they do it at the BFW. They, they do. Remember and, those? And I think, <laughs> they I think your city decibels uh, I think is right. like at seven seventy five or something like that. I, believe I, it. I, I need to go look it up. It's too, it's and uh, the recommendation where I find on the Google deal is uh, for comfort in a neighborhood, which is a residential commercial zoning, what we have on our side of the street is 60 decibels. And you're, you're currently speaking to us at 60 decibels. <laughs> I have a, a, one more question. That that you're listening to, that's in the outside garden area, is it not? Are they inside no, the outside, 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 outside the garden area? Okay, um, and the reason why I ask that question again is because I live right next to the Alco and the Saddle Club, and they put music in the outside garden area there, and I can clearly hear it, uh, you know, across in my area. But when they do put the music on the inside, I can't hear it that well at all. But and so here's where I'm going with that. I do know what you mentioned earlier, or somebody mentioned earlier. I think it may might have been you that hot funds were um, granted to them and they were doing some remodeling based on the interior of it for the historical factor. What, because I happen to be on that committee too. So let me just address that a little bit. We looked at that and one of the reasons why they wanted that was so that they could move some music inside versus having it outside. So when they get that finished, maybe moving it inside will at least during certain periods help, may not, Every year, help you know, all season have, long. But if they can get the music moved inside, it won't in be as distracting. Stairs of the Richie, have you been in there? I have not said that. I, I have. I, I would say that you're two years or longer out from having music inside of Richie. Well, I, I know I, that I, something really 
they have a there's a time constraint on the funds they can use for hot if they don't get it done within a certain period of time they lose there's that. Right. So I know that's a fact and that's pretty short. <laughs> I mean, so that would be great. And I'm not saying that it'll happen that, in that time. But. Yeah, we're not against the, the businesses and that. No, I That's understand. Cool. Uh -huh. We love music. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't want to. Well, I was just trying to give you something to hope for. Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> your own music. If we can get it moved inside. <laughs> this past Saturday night, we had a family from all over Texas come to our house, and we were having dinner on our porch again because all this music. Oh, was, yes. I could, you know what? I heard the Richie music Saturday night all the way over on my street in my backyard because I thought the crystal had opened back up. And I went, I, you know, why I know the Richie was packed it was because I drove it because I wanted to find out where the music was coming from. And it was coming from the Richie, and I could hear it all the way over on Third Street on the other side of the railroad tracks. That's was, how loud it was. Was there a lot of parking That's on pretty bad. Street? It, uh, you know, Richie, street? It's pretty Street. Fifth. Fifth Street, there wasn't hardly any park. Because that's, that a, that's an emergency street. They no. can't park there. Fifth Street wasn't. Did I say fifth? I didn't mean that. No, no, it was no, Murphy was Street, which ahead, was completely packed. You couldn't even get down. You can the step street. up to the podium if you need. Okay. Just trying to say something. Something I'm that sorry. I didn't mention and with all the parking, you know, it's it's public land there to park in front of my home, but I do have a driveway there on the side. And I'm letting them park there right now because I haven't fix the building in the back as a rental property. But once I do that, I'm not going to let them block that driveway. And it's you have right next no to the signs. Adobe wall and my little brick wall around the, around the, uh, my lawn. And it's a pretty big area. I mean, you can get three cars parked right there. So when I take that away from them, where are they going to park them? That's their problem, not yours. Yeah. But I mean, I'm just saying, you know, parking is a concern, but I am more concerned about the noise yep. and just invade the invasion of my home life. I understand. I will say I was there Saturday night, so I was one of the guilty people. <laughs> uh, were you performing? <laughs> you were one of them. So <laughs> yelling? <laughs> yeah, I was even screaming. Um, <laughs> no, uh, the owner, one of the owners was walking around with a DV meter on his phone. Uh, which is easy to get. Uh, anybody can get one. Um, and he was he he knew they got a little bit loud, and so he went around and he was measuring at the property lines, and he had to get them uh, down below eighty. That was his guideline. Yeah, I could hear it in my background. Uh, that's from the property line. So eighty is kind of loud, I admit. Uh, and he did turn them, and they did turn it down. But for quite a while, they were pretty loud. Uh, so, uh, I understand your concerns because it was loud. Uh, I'll just tell you what was going on as a birthday party for, you may know a person, Charlie Maxwell. And so mm -hmm. there's a head like, there's probably about a hundred people there. So what are y'all thinking on the decision? <laughs> okay. Well, that's, that's, uh, you, I'm letting everybody you speak here, but uh, <laughs> I think it is, you want to vote? I think at this time, vote. remember we are advisory council and it is time, I think, to vote I or nay to approve this uh, the, for the zoning planning committee to approve or nay on this special permit 2024 1001. Ready to vote? Let's hold yeah. the vote. Any ayes? There are no ayes. Any nays? Nay. Nays it's are right unanimous. Too. I'll just abstain. It's premature. Oh, yeah. one, one abstain. One abstain, which is basically a nay. <laughs> I think eventually it's going to five, happen. Five days it's just with the abstention. Um, it's cart before the board right now. Yeah. Okay. I think that's where you guys need to attend because at the yeah. end. Any, the, any further board member comments? Go it. Go in number. Any further board no. member comments? <laughs> the meeting is adjourned. All right.